Today we will learn and reflect on St. Augustine's treatise on lying. St. Augustine first wrote a treatise against lying, but he was unhappy with the treatment of this troublesome sin. So he tried again in a newer work, which we will study on lying, or De Mendacio in Latin. This is one of St. Augustine's many works that have been quoted in the Catholic Catechism. Since St. Augustine was a bishop tending to his flock rather than an abbot of a monastery overseeing unmarried monks who, through daily asceticism and prayer, seek to lead a more perfect life, his advice is often more practical than that of the monastics. At the end of our talk, we will discuss the sources we use for this video and additional lessons we learned from these sources. And also, you can follow along in the PowerPoint presentation on SlideShare. Please, we welcome interesting questions in the comments. Sometimes these generate short videos of their own. Let us learn and reflect together. St. Augustine opens his book on lying. There is a great question about lying which confronts us every day. And that is whether we rashly call a lie that which is not, or decide whether a white lie can be a kind of honest, well-meant, charitable lie. To answer this question we face daily, we must first search our motives, whether our words are spoken to any good purpose. So how can we be sure our motives are pure? St. Augustine teaches us, this discussion is full of dark corners and cavern-like windings, which eludes the eagerness of the seeker, for even charitable lying, if there is such a thing, is a spiritually dangerous thing. St. Augustine says that you never err more safely than when you love the truth in excess and be eager to reject falsehood. And St. Augustine, in his retractions, says that he wrote this book to inculcate the love of speaking the truth. When we ponder this question, we should ponder with St. Augustine the actions of the Hebrew midwives in Egypt and Exodus. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, and this is quoted from Exodus, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him, but if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? And the midwife said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Did the Hebrew midwives sin when they told this lie to the Pharaoh? In another situation, many thousands of Jews were saved from the Holocaust by lies of this sort. Many people helped hide Jews and paid with their lives. Many diplomats issued thousands of passports permitting Jews to emigrate to avoid the death camps. And we all know the story of Oskar Schindler who lied constantly to the Nazis to save his Jewish workers. What is odd about St. Augustine mentioning the benevolent lies of the Hebrew midwives is he also mentions two other instances where the patriarchs lied that may not be as clear cut. St. Augustine tells us, in the case of Sarah, whom, when she had laughed, when she was told she would never bear a child at such an advanced age, denied to the angels that she had laughed. And St. Augustine continues, in the case of Jacob being questioned by his father, and answering that he was the elder son of Esau, which robbed his brother Esau of his birthright. And St. Augustine says that these lies were told by persons whom you would not dare to blame, and so we must conclude that it may sometimes be not only blameworthy, but even praiseworthy to tell a lie. But though it may be praiseworthy to lie to save the life of another, it is never praiseworthy to lie to save your own life, particularly to the detriment of your neighbor. St. Augustine reminds us that Christ exhorts us, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No man has a greater love than this, than a man would lay down his life for his friends. In all his major works, St. Augustine always teaches us of the centrality of the twofold love of God and love of our neighbor. Perhaps St. Augustine has in mind the adventures of Odysseus in his ten-year odyssey returning home from the Trojan Wars. When St. Augustine says, for if a person who is used to telling lies for harm's sake comes to tell him for the sake of doing good, that person has made great progress. In the tale of the Odyssey, the goddess Athena is simply amused by the long and complex false history Odysseus tells of his wanderings and lineage. 
But this craftiness had kept him alive while the gods condemned many of the men and its crew for their foolishness and lack of self-control. And we read in Homer's Odyssey, As Odysseus spoke, the goddess, clear-eyed Athena, smiled and patted him with her hand. Her form grew like a woman's, fair and tall and skilled in fine work, and speaking in winged words, she said, Prudent and wily must one be to overreach you in craft of any kind, even though it be a god who strives to match you. Bold, shifty, and wily, will you not now, within your own land, cease from the false and misleading tales which from the bottom of your heart you love? And the implication is this loving of lying is indeed spiritually dangerous. St. Augustine then provides the common situation when we may choose not to tell the truth to a gravely sick man, for fear that his health would worsen if we told him some uncomfortable and emotionally damaging truth, if such a psychic blow could prevent him from recovering his health. In this work by St. Augustine on lying is quoted in the Catholic Catechism in its discussion of the commandment, Do Not Slander. And section 2482 quotes on lying to say that a lie consists of speaking a falsehood with the intention of deceiving. A lie is any utterance whatever with will to deceive. The Catechism continues, quoting from John, The Lord denounces lying as the work of the devil. You are of your father the devil. There is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. St. Augustine teaches us, There is a difference between lying and being a liar. A man may tell a why a man may tell a lie unwittingly, but a liar loves to lie and inhabits in his mind the delight of his lying. Have you ever met someone or seen on TV someone who lies so much that he can't hardly say anything that's undeniably true? Lying is hazardous to your soul. St. Augustine quotes these verses from the Wisdom of Solomon in several places in his work. Beware of useless murmuring and keep your tongue from slander because no secret word will go unpunished, and a lying mouth destroys the soul. St. Augustine dislikes lying as much as he dislikes liars, and if he's compelled to justify lying in any circumstances, he ardently wants the exception to be so narrow as to be unattainable as possible. Perhaps he fears that if he opens the barn door or crack, a herd of cattle will barge through, such as our propensity to sin and deceive, as all sin involves deception. But God did bless and reward the Hebrew midwives for their actions. So what is always in the mind of St. Augustine as he ponders this riddle? What should always be in all our minds? The commandment, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, and how is this possible? St. Augustine teaches us that to love our neighbor we must truly love ourselves, we must love God, and how can we truly love ourselves if we have a lying mouth that destroys our soul? As St. Augustine reminds us, good men should never tell lies. And St. Augustine also examines the various types of lies. When someone says something that is not true out of ignorance, believing that it is true, then this is not counted as a lie because there is no intention to lie. The martyrs to the faith were in living memory of some Christians in St. Augustine's day. These early martyrs were glorified by the church when they were martyred for their faith, for their refusal to bear false witness against Christ and deny their faith. But what if the authorities had also threatened to kill their father as well as their family if they did not deny Christ? Should they deny Christ to prevent the murder of their family members? These were hard choices the early Christians had to make. Even if we think a lie is harmless, it harms our soul. Beware of lying. Be cautious in telling white lies. We must ask ourselves, do we prefer pleasing people over telling the truth? What about the person whose lies benefits someone rather than harms them? That sort of lie is still spiritually dangerous because it can damage the soul. What about the Robin Hood argument? And St. Augustine asks us, what harm does it do to someone rolling in wealth who loses one bushel out of a thousand to a thief who needs that one bushel to keep him from starving? You can be merciful to the thief, but still, he has sinned. But it is no sin if a man hides his property, which he fears to lose as that's not really lying, but discretion. And that's especially true when you do not reveal where your neighbor's treasure is hidden when asked by a thief. No harm is done when a thief is not tempted to thievery. And this reminds us of the story of Ruth gleaning weed in the fields of Boaz, and the biblical laws requiring that Israeli landowners leave the leftover weed in the harvest for the poor to glean. The principle here is that we should be kind to the poor, so they are not forced to steal to survive. 
By the same logic, the landlord that hid Anne Frank with her Jewish family in the attic and lied to the Gasapo when they knocked on his door asking where the Jews were hiding, he did not sin when he told them he did not know where they were, knowing that they would be driven like cattle to the death camps. St. Augustine teaches us that this is not false witness, because the Gestapo were not searching for witnesses when they knocked on the door looking for Jews. They were searching for betrayers. In these last two circumstances, St. Augustine teaches that the question is no longer about lying, but whether an injury ought to be done to any man. St. Augustine teaches us that we must guard our chastity of mind, and when we love our neighbor, we guard our innocence and benevolence, and when we love God, we guard our piety. Through innocence, we harm no man. Through benevolence, we do good to whom we can. Through piety, we worship God. This also happens when we refuse to bear false witness against our neighbor. And this happens when we learn to love to speak the truth of our neighbor. And this happens when we do not seek to harm our neighbor, but rather seek to love our neighbor as ourselves. Now we'll discuss the sources we use for this video. The main source for our video is the Nicene and Post-Nicene Fathers Translation of Faith and Creed. First series, volume three. Uh, this treatise is the collection of the moral treatises on the Trinity, is the first treatise in the collection. And the collection also includes on catechizing the uninstructed and on the faith in the creed, for which we've already recorded a video. Since St. Augustine mentions this treaty in his retractions, and since it's included in the Index of Works, he prepared shortly before he died, this is definitely one that was penned by St. Augustine. And of course, he, this work is quoted in the Catechism as well. The YouTube description links to the video script and our blog. Please support our channel by sharing this video with your friends and by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons and by clicking on the Amazon links to purchase any of the books we discussed, which will earn us a small affiliate commission. And please consider becoming a patron of our channel. And please click on the links for interesting videos on other topics that will broaden your knowledge and improve your soul. Thank you.